No, I, I just know that next Friday I'm gonna die. Some things I just know, I, I don't know how, I just do. Like I know there will be coins. Coins? Mm-hmm. Lots of coins. Weird ones. And I know that you'll go someplace dark underground. I, I don't know. What do you mean underground? And I know you'll try to help. Cassie, I don't understand what you're saying. But you can't, okay? I gotta go. Trig, I don't want Mr. Corrigan sending me to Principal Wood again. Cassie, please. Thanks for being so nice. I really do like that shirt. You should put a sweater on so it doesn't get stained. Hey, everybody. This is Camila, and this is Revisiting Sunnydale at episode 130. Say hello to the people, Marcella. Hey, people. I'm Marcella. And we are here to talk Buffy stuff, obviously. Hopefully, I don't know if you're new. If you're new, welcome. And if you are a regular here at the Revisiting Sunnydale Tables of Talk, (laughs) welcome (laughs) back and thanks for hanging out with us. I just have to confirm that she said Buffy stuff. What do you think I said? Nothing (laughs) else. If you thought she said anything else, you're on the wrong podcast. You got to go to that other podcast. We are here to talk Buffy. 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 Buff. As you guys may or may not know, I have started a reaction channel on Yay. YouTube. And I have to watch my own face a lot while I edit. Yeah. It's annoying to do that. Um, it's, it really it's, is. It's not a pleasant... Like, I am not one to... Yeah, I mean, I barely look in the mirror at myself on a regular right? basis. You know? <laughs> I never look... I'm like a cat or like a dog. I don't want to look myself in the eye. <laughs> But, but you know it's great what? watching yourself fall asleep watching a movie <laughs> what <laughs> while editing a star wars movie recently a couple months ago in may i totally fell asleep while editing while i was what no while watching the movie while reacting to the movie okay so you record so your reaction so you just leave the the recording going as uh-huh. you're actually uh-huh. okay i see uh-huh. <laughs> you fell asleep Oh, look at me sleep. <laughs> well, that's not something we all get to get to see. <laughs> no, no. And I actually left portions of it in. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you want honest reactions? I honestly fell asleep. So if you are interested in watching Marcella sleep, um, yep. don't go to her house because that could end badly for you. Instead, go to her no. YouTube channel. Yeah. Watch with Marcella. And that's what I've been watching. And Twitter helped me pick out my next show. They have requested I watch Invincible. So that will be coming soon. I'm not familiar with Invincible. Invincible. Wait, is that the Mark Wahlberg thing? No, that was actually, that was really good. Um, Invincible is a Amazon Prime animated show based off of a comic book about superheroes. And J.K. Simmons does the voice of one of the superheroes Uh, i hear it deals with some pretty fucked up views of superheroes like the side you don't really talk about in marvel like all of the property damage thank you and murder and (laughs) that kind of thing so i'm down i'm down for it it sounds interesting yeah so look out for that soon well all right then so but in addition to all the other things that we're usually watching and reacting to we are Still watching Buffy because we are yep. now in season seven, episode four, Help. Original air date October 15th, 2002. Written by Rebecca Krishner, directed by Rock Rosen, Rick Rock, Rick Rosenthal. Rock. Huh. <laughs> he wants to rock. <laughs> Buffy begins a new job as school counselor at Sunnydale High. On her first day, she encounters a troubled young girl who is convinced she is about to die. Important guest stars, co-stars, D.B. Woodson as Principal Robin Wood, Azura Sky, Cassie Newton, Ty- Zachary Ty Bryan as Peter Nichols. You may remember him from such hits as Home Improvement. And Tokyo Drift. <laughs> oh, for real. <laughs> Rick Gonzalez as Tomas, which I see him a lot in, in things. Randomly. Too. Yeah, just randomly. I can't even... Uh, I can't pick anything out, but he just he shows up a lot. Uh, Sarah Hagen as Amanda and Glenn Morshower as Mr. Newton. There's another one. Glenn Morshower is one of those people that you don't know his name. He's like one of those just bit actors, but right. he's the guy that always plays like the colonel in <laughs> right. military. You, you know, he's always the military right. dude. Exactly, because he has a certain cadence in, in which he speaks, and that's. <laughs> 
kind of what he's been. That's what he's been known for. So again, you've seen him. You know who he is. But this episode starts off with a little bit of non PTSD. I don't understand why Buffy even gets in this damn coffin. No, there's no way. Like she had you had girl, you woke up from the dead in your coffin and had to dig yourself out of your grave six feet up, like claw your way out, and you're okay with just hanging out and hiding in a coffin? There's no no way. No. And when I do die, cremate me. I'm never going in that box again. (laughs) It doesn't make sense. subject of boxes why'd they put dawn in the tiny one right she made a great point of that she is not the shortest person there so she should not have been in the child size box the child size coffin and for whatever reason they're hiding out at this funeral home to kill this potent this woman who may be a vampire uh because buffy saw something in the newspaper which i just think this is a lot and i, I stand by xander when he said like this is a lot for just one random vamp like <laughs> we, like you had nothing else to do <laughs> and how long have they been there right like i don't <laughs> so i guess it's, it's all just serves as an um, unimportant slash trying to be important backdrop for them to serve us mm, a very long-winded exposition of what has happened there have been there they take this time to recap us on everything that has happened in the past three episodes. Like we're Basically in the beginning of this. shit on Willow behind her back. Rude. <laughs> Out of the house, I guess. And this poor lady. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get why this happens. Like, and she is all sinister when she wakes up. Too. <laughs> like she got a lot of gruff for somebody on her back. I'm not peaceful. Well, maybe, you know, she was already just kind of like an an, an awful person in, <laughs> before death. Like, maybe she was just, because, you know, vampirism is supposed to bring out who you really are 100%. And... That will always be top 10. One of my favorite Buffy comedic moments is when Angel tries to say that the vampire you is nothing like who you <laughs> And Buffy just gives him the side eye, the best <laughs> side eye I've ever seen. I love it. Now it's the next day and Buffy's in school. She's at work and she gets to talk to the kids and we get the whole like back to kids here, kids there, kids talking. Some kids need help. Some kids just want to get laid. And some of them are Dawn complaining about her <laughs> sister. <laughs> I love that so much. Like, did she just stroll in there? Like, did she actually leave class with a pass to go talk shit on her right. sister to her face? Right. Or did she just stroll in in between classes? Like, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to, to know what the circumstances were that brought her there. Like, <laughs> the boys of Sunnydale are gross. Yeah. Except for Tomas. Tomas got legit trauma going on and needs a hug. Yes, he does. Like, he's worried about his brother joining a gang or going to the military or something like that. I don't know. And he doesn't want to talk. Mm-hmm. He does not want to talk. But he ends up talking. And meanwhile, Willow and Xander, they offer some more exposition and backstory. And But all, they're on their way to go visit Tara's grave. And which I feel like it was a wasted seen the way they did it because uh all the exposition that they were giving were with xander and willow talking on the way to the grave that could have kind of been willow talking to tara and it could have been a much more touching moment and a much more touching scene all we get is her saying hey it's me yeah that's really it and i feel i feel a little bit robbed sweet that they followed the jewish tradition of putting stones on the grave and I guess it's something Joss does because he does he did it in Serenity as well with oh. Wash's grave. Oh. Um, but it is a wasted opportunity. She could have absolutely had that entire conversation with. And it's the first time I guess we've we don't really see people visit grave sites other no. than to kill people. Right. Like Buffy was there at her mom's right after her funeral. Yeah, she just never left. Right. And she hasn't been back since. Right. Which, you know, I mean, I guess she's been dead and all, but... (laughs) Busy being dead. (laughs) True. Oh, I just realized something terrible. What? Joyce is in a hole. Joyce doesn't exist anymore. Uh Uh-huh. Sunnydale's gone. There's no grave to visit. (laughs) 
Like Sunnydale's <laughs> destroyed. It's a big hole in the earth. Well, there is no grave for them to visit. Well, now is an important time to tell you folks that <laughs> it's an important time to reflect <laughs> upon the fact of after death, like life after death, who knows exactly what it is. But no matter what, you and th- that person's no longer in that body. So it doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> and spoilers. Sorry if you haven't seen the rest of season seven. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we do. We talk spoilers here. Talk a lot of spoilers. The show is like over what tw- twenty years old. Um, <laughs> is Some a- of the kids that Buffy talks to are. I, I, I worry about uh, Amanda. Yeah, but she's a little, she's a little weird. <laughs> A little weird, but I kind of feel her though. Like she's t- complaining about there's a bully after, and she's like, you know, if if you're gonna tell me that he's just insecure, like whatever. Well, I'm I'm really sick and tired of other people being insecure, and I have to worry about it, you know. And I got, <laughs> and I I I'm the one at fault. Like I'm the one that has to deal with their insecurity. Like I get it. I'm I'm I, I understand, Amanda, and I feel for you, friend. Yeah, it doesn't make true. any sense. And then she said she like waited and jumped him. Waited after class or something. After class. She <laughs> kicked, yeah, she did. Yeah, she took it to the extreme. And then you've got this kid who's like, I'm worried I might be gay. Ugh. And then Buffy's doing the right thing of, you know, reassuring him it's not a problem. You know, it's nothing to be ashamed of, da da da. And then he pff, turns into something icky and is like, uh, I'm not sure. But if to be on the safe side, like to, for me to find out, could you go on a date with me? Like, dude, in what dude. world? In what world? In what world? <laughs> Would your teacher, a person in a position of authority at your school, All right. go on a date with you? I guess this ever worked for you. That could send her to prison, lose her job. Shit, nothing's going to happen to you. No, except you get a few high fives in the hallway for being a stud. Right? But then after her little disturbing, and here's one thing I don't understand. So... You know, we have the conversation at the gravesite and then we go back to the school and we're intercutting Buffy with these kids. But we're moving between two different days because Buffy's outfit keeps changing. Ah. (laughs) She's wearing the white tank top with jewelry Mm -hmm. in some scenes. And then she's wearing a different darker blouse in other scenes. And it's not like she just threw it on over her clothes. I don't think. I don't think. Maybe. No, it doesn't seem like it. Then she meets Cassie. And Cassie, <laughs> Cassie adorably is wearing a shirt that kind of looks like it's an anime version of Tara and Willow. Yeah. And Cassie, Cassie is sad, but resigned to the fact that she doesn't need help because she's going to die on Friday. Right. So she's it's just kind of pointless. She's been sent to Buffy because I guess she was a straight A student and now her grades have slacked and, and teachers are concerned about her mental state. And she's like, I don't see the point anymore because, you know, she says she's going to die next Friday. Buffy's like, hey, eh? <laughs> why would you commit suicide? She's like, oh, I'm not suicidal. I'm not going to commit suicide. I just know I'm going to die. I guess this is just something that's going to happen. And there's nothing I can do about it. So She's nice totally talking cool to you. It. So, you know, have a good day. And you should probably right. put something on that sweater. Oh, and there, she says, I know there will be coins. And you should probably put some something over your, your shirt. I really like it. Um, you're going to, you know, so you don't get get it stained. <laughs> so She's like, what is wrong with this girl? <laughs> and I'm more like, how are you qualified for this job? Right. Like there has been no, like as far as we can tell, there has been, she's had zero training of like how to gently discuss that types of things like, you know, um, abuse or right. suicidal tendencies or thoughts or, you know, depression. Violence. Right. Yeah. None of this stuff has, does she even have a handbook? Like has anybody just <laughs> like, cause I feel like there's like some sort of training or a certificate <laughs> at least that she should right. have. <laughs> I swear you have to be certified. You can't just you can't just roll in there and start handing out weird advice to impressionable young minds. So Buffy tells Wood about Cassie and he's like, Meh. you know, these kids. <laughs> <laughs> because fuck knows who, how he got his job. Right. He's probably not qualified either. He's it like... does bother me a little that I don't think Buffy's wearing a bra at school, but... <laughs> And so, you know, what is just like, hey, you know, this is what sometimes these kids talk some talk and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we alert some people. We keep an eye out. And that's it. I'm hope for the best. <laughs> okay. Sunny Hill High sucks. I am not. Well, let's not forget about the one thing that happened here that uh, 
Who wrote this episode? Um, well, we know where Rebecca, this line came from. Yeah, Rebecca Kirshner. About the hood? Yeah. So Wood tells Buffy the story about how he was talking big when he was a teenager. And um, he, he said, tell, told everybody he was going to bust some dude's ass. And he was like, I could barely bust a mo- dance move, let alone somebody's ass. But, you know, I had to learn something, da 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 how to protect myself or something. Or, this, that's how things were where I grew up. And Buffy's like, the hood? Buffy. Bitch. Buff Angela. I need you to not. Like, how dare you? How dare you? How has she ever? Dare you? Has she ever done that to anybody else? I don't think so. No. The hood. This fucking racist ass microaggression. Mm. <laughs> Racial profiling. And then he's like, and he looks at her and it's like, bitch, Beverly Hills. I'm like, that's, that's where I grew up. <laughs> what you thought? <laughs> damn uh, so what is like you know whatever about cassie so you know uh, buffy takes this info to everybody else and everybody else is also like everyone well, else... she does spill her coffee yes that's right so that's in wood's office she does fuck up her shirt and this is why which immediately makes her go to dawn and say i need i have a job for you right and dawn i'm sure i was is conflicted about Ugh, i'm doing she's like buffy telling me to do stuff again but then also like oh my god I'm part of the team. I get to do stuff. Oh my god, I'm a Scooby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an official Scooby. So she has to infiltrate Cassie's inner circle. Which, which consists of her, Cassie and this weird dude. Right. Some dude with a shaggy bowl haircut. This dude is asking Cassie to the dance. What's going to happen? She's like, no, I don't want to go. Don comes in and starts chatting him up. And, you know, Cassie makes uh, the connection of who she is. And she's like, oh, you're the counselor's little sister and Dawn. And this is like, this is kind of a burn light episode. So it is. this is, it the, really is the best I could do or like, I, but I do really like it where, but where Dawn's just like, no, she's my sister, uh-huh. <laughs> which cute. I get it. It is cute. And it's annoying when people do that. Oh, your sister. No, my <laughs> sister. Like, I'm tired of being the sister. <laughs> Meanwhile, Buffy and Willow and Xander are like trying to search for stuff uh, about Cassie. And but um, but for whatever reason, Willow and Xander are just they're not believing like they don't believe that Cassie could be psychic, which guys. You've looked on the hell mouth for how long? Why do you not just automatically default to, yep? Exactly. They're like, you. are you sure you're just not seeing norm, paranormal where there's just normal? No. Is that ever really the case? Right. I would say 90% of the time when Buffy's cock or when Buffy's back goes up about something, when her spidey senses go off, it's legit. It's legit. There is a reason she's not just... And why would she do that? Like, right. you think she just has the time to just be fucking around? Like, right. uh, how about I give you guys tasks? Like, <laughs> no, no. It's like if anything, this just show, shows that we need Giles. Right. Even though they are adults, apparently they need an adult to tell them what to do. Yes. So they're still, you know, hemming and hawing about it. And then uh, Willow decides to Google cassie and uh finds her website full of poems and apparently it's the first time they googled was used in a show which okay all right i don't recall that being anything you know like it doesn't stand out it wasn't a thing i I guess i never really thought about it he does make a joke about like i don't want to do that he's like she's 17 and i was like it's a search engine you twat like it's not such gross jokes in this one like the joke about he's looking at her school records and he's like yeah strep throat ear infection yeast infection none of my business <laughs> you you're right you're right it's none of any of your business any of you y'all's didn't even business. need to say it out loud when you read it did you have, do you have to <laughs> right. say the words that you read <laughs> So when Willow Googles her, she finds like her website full of poems, which turn out to be a little bit like dark and moody and angsty and whatever. But like normal, I assume, like normal 17 year old stuff. She's a teenage girl. Right. It's normal. And Willow, a hormone bomb. Right. And Willow confesses that, you know, in her time, she may have written a couple angsty poems, love poems herself. And Xander takes this opportunity to make it about him. She's like, seriously, over you. Actually, that's a good burn. That's a- <laughs> that is that is actually a pretty good burn. <laughs> and she also confesses to having some Doogie Howser fanfic 
in the, <laughs> in Which, the repertoire. Considering she ended up being on How I right? Met Your Mother with him, it's just weird. It's cute. I like it. <laughs> I wish it was a deliberate nod, but obviously it's not because, uh, as far as I know, Allison Hannigan is not psychic and she cannot right. see into the future. <laughs> so Dawn rolls in and she's uh, been clearly watching a lot of Law and Order because she's throwing around words like, I got the perp fingered and we need to call- collar him before he lawyers up and blah, blah, blah. So she thinks <laughs> that the perpetrator. I mean, I'm kind of with, I'm kind of with Dawn. I don't trust this Mike Helberg person. He's kind of shifty. <laughs> this is who Dawn thinks it is. Cassie's little friend who keeps asking her to the dance. Uh, <laughs> nobody's really, they're all kind of ignoring Cassie because they have found out that Cassie's dad is a violent drunk. And uh, they think he's probably, he must be the problem then. So uh, okay. off they go to invade his privacy. They're doing a lot of assuming this episode. <laughs> right? Just grasping at straws. And, you know, they roll in there. And Buffy's like, I'm from the school. He's like, what the fuck? Like, uh, <laughs> um, Cassie. Why are there a bunch of kids in my house? Right? It's like, is Cassie doing something wrong? She's like, no, actually, I just came to see if you were still drinking a lot. He's like. <laughs> Not your job. <laughs> Not in the parameters of your job. Right. And she, like, at some point implies that, you know, she thinks that he's beating up on his kid. And then she's like, that's all. And and I love his reaction. like, oh, that's all. (laughs) You just think I'm a piece of shit (laughs) that abuses my daughter and drinks all day. Okay. That's all. That's it. But in the course of their conversation, she finds out that, you know, he only gets Cassie once a month. And he already had her this month and the month or the week or one weekend a month. And he's already had her this month. And the weekend that Cassie says she's going to die is not his weekend. Yeah. Which, I mean, you know, Buffy's defense, there is booze everywhere. (laughs) Um, But, you know, like, I guess that Buffy's logic behind is like, oh, she's not going to be staying with him this weekend. So he can't possibly be the one that's going to harm her. But I mean, it's not like he's technically not like he's not he's unable to right. see it's her like or be a ru- be right like he can't he couldn't inter- interact with her at all but anyway so she and xander finally leave and cassie comes out of the shadows <laughs> why was she there I what was know. she doing i was i was waiting for an explanation like was she following <laughs> buffy does she just psychically know that Buffy was there interrogating her father uh, but she comes out and she's like you know he's not the one he, he's not gonna hurt me thanks for trying but I really wish you'd fucking settle down and leave, leave me alone <laughs> and it's like I wish you wouldn't jump out of the shadows at me I am a slayer you're lucky you didn't get staked right what's wrong with you but it's just not in the cards for Cassie and she I mean I do like that line where she's she's just like it's you think I don't care? Yeah. She has this beautiful little, you know, monologue moment, a passionate plea of how she wants to live and how all the things that she wants to experience in life and but she's like, but she knows it it's not gonna happen. And yeah. we find out Mike's not the perv that I think he is. He because she actually wants to go to the dance with him. She yeah. just doesn't wanna She's gonna die. What's the point? Right. She doesn't want to like do all this stuff. Like she just knows and she's, she's, she's got a lot on her mind. So she really is trying to come to terms with this. And also though, I kind of feel like maybe if she knows she's going to die, maybe, I mean, I know you don't have a lot of affairs to get in order at 17, but shouldn't you be writing some letters to somebody, some people right. or telling some folks how much you love them <laughs> before you, you move on I mean, to this to the other a plane? Walk to remember. You've seen a walk to remember. <laughs> she had a bucket list. She got shit done. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, maybe maybe you want to do some stuff other than put the nothing. If that's the case, not, then go ice then skating. That, <laughs> right. Go to Rockefeller Center and go to right ice skating. Like, for, from what I can Have tell. Have to dance early. Right. From what I can tell, you've got like a week. So let's let's get some, let's knock some stuff, check some boxes, right? kid. Come on, Cassie. But no, there's a B plot line, kids. Dudes in cloaks. Dudes in cloaks. Bro culture has arrived. <laughs> Do you remember the fraternity back in season two? Yeah. That uh, we're doing some demony stuff to get some uh, wishes fulfilled. Well, apparently now we got some high school kids. Apparently doing some it. of their little brothers. <laughs> and their target, Cassie. <sighs> for son of a blah, blah, blah. So for contractual reasons, Spike shows up because, <laughs> because I don't see the real point <laughs> of him being in this episode. <laughs> 
<laughs> just because he's a series regular. Right. <laughs> and so Buffy goes to talk to him in the in the basement and asks for his help. Like, do you know anything about the, what's going to be hurting this girl? And he goes on this tangent about how he hurt the girl. And she's like, what are you talking about? What did you do? And then turns out he's just babbling about how he hurt Buffy and feeling a lot of remorse and smacking himself around a bit. And she's like, eh. This seems this seems fruitless, so I'm gonna go. And he's like, "No, please, go. please stay and help help me be quiet." And she's like, mm, "I feel like it's worse when I'm here." And you're you're probably right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. And in my mind, there's a spinoff show with the janitor from Scrubs, and like <laughs> just hanging out in the basement during the day. Because there has to be a janitor at this school right. that comes down to the basement. Right. Or just Spike like run to every little corner every time somebody comes down. Well, as we know that the apparently the the infrastructure of the basement changes around, so maybe the forces that are down there controlling Spike are also just like making him invisible too. But for like Buffy seems to be able to find him all the time, no problem. All but, the time. <laughs> I don't know. All the time. I don't know. Or maybe it's just a, a janitor. It is a janitor who runs into him on a regular basis and is like, this is none of my business. I don't get paid enough for this to care. Nope. I am here to mop up, vom- to, to sprinkle some sawdust on vomit. <laughs> Occasionally <laughs> yell at a kid that I find down here smoking. <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> that's and change some toilet paper in the public restrooms. I'm <laughs> no. This isn't guy babbling to himself in the corner with, uh, with oh, impeccably no. bleached blonde hair. Nah. And I got to say, I love me some Spike. I love me some James Marsters. But it was about time for the show to start coming to an end because he looks like he aged about five years oh, between yeah. season six and season seven. Right? Because his, his skin went from smooth and supple and <laughs> <laughs> like like baby face in like what, season three when he shows like season two, season three when he shows up. Mm-hmm. And then now he's just like, oh, you are a grown ass man like you look a man at, looking in the face of aarp like right what You're up 45 <laughs> vampires aren't supposed to age <sighs> this little weird kid of course <laughs> poor little mike <laughs> Buffy's... gets confronted by buffy right. she starts aggressively questioning him in the halls aggressively <laughs> what are you doing why are you angry oh my god do you get pissed off a lot it's cassie make you mad da 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 He's like, look, I got a B on my exam. I didn't know. I thought I knew the stuff. I'm a little bit, you know, whatever about Cassie saying no to me, but I thought I might ask Dawn to the dance <laughs> instead. <laughs> and Buffy's taking it. She's like, oh, so you're not mad. Wait a minute. You want to ask Dawn to the dance and she's your second choice? <laughs> right? What's happening with Wood and the janitor slowly looking through this child's locker? Like the locker is not that big, guys. No. And they're taking like one thing out and then all the coins fall. Was so there... it's the trigger for the coins. But what were they doing? Right. I don't even know. Like, why were they looking in the locker to begin with? And like six of them. They have six lockers open. Is this just because Buffy told them to? Suggested that they do this? And here's our janitor, actually. Basically, like, this is our guy. Right? This is... <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> He's like looking, he's like opening every folder, every magazine, turning them page by page, every book. <laughs> so slow. Like, this is so this unnecessary. Is so unnecessary. And those coins that fall out, like, they would have been found immediately, like, on site. They would have been right there because mm-hmm. it's not like there's a trick door. No. <laughs> and it's not like they're normal coins. They're like doubloons. Right. Like, they're huge pressed gold pieces. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay, I see this. The coins came out of the the next locker, so they the were locker. they were yeah. putzing around in one locker and then moved on to the next, and that's where yeah. the balloons come from. <laughs> and so huge! Why are they so big? And then Buffy just starts to aggressively. So that is her theme in this. She's just aggressively interrogating everyone. Yeah, this, I don't think you're allowed to talk to teenagers like this as a. As a no, as a employee of the school they attend, so she's like hounding this kid. She pulls him into her office, and he's like, "You know what? I don't know what you're talking about. I got to catch my bus. I'm going to be late." And then she starts going on about you're wasting my time. He's like, "You pulled me in here. Like you, right? You came to get me." (laughs) (laughs) Eventually, he fesses up to to uh, what what he knows. I guess I know who you're talking about. Yeah, it turns out some guys that he knows wants to like pick, pick Cassie so they can mess with her. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Sure. 
Don is walking with Cassie after school, and Cassie's like, "Okay, I guess the guess this is goodbye." And Don's like, "No, don't say that. I'll walk you home." And blah blah blah. And Cassie's <laughs> like, "Cassie's like, I know what you're doing. You know, it's fine. I'm okay. Whatever. And we are friends." And they're chatting, and then Peter, future rapist, shows up and. Uh, talks, distracts her. Is there to distract Dawn. And before he gets up to them, Cassie's like, Dawn, no matter what happens, it's not your fault. And she's like, huh? Hmm? Eh? What do you mean? And so dumb, dumbass is like, Dawn, I just want to know if somebody asked you to the prom. She's like, or the dance. She's like, no. He's like, I was just taking a poll. And then, you know, douches his way like, out. Oh, like, hee hee hee. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he douches his way on out of the scene and come to find out that was just so they could snatch up Cassie because Dawn can't find her after this encounter their plan is to sacrifice cassie to complete a ritual to summon a demon to bring them infinite riches seriously is this is this how easy it is is this how everybody that has money is this how jeff bezos put a dick in the sky and took it to space yes by sacrificing a teenage girl to a demon is that all i have to do So they're chanting and marching and threatening and giggling. And Buffy crashes the party. She's surprised she's hiding in the cloak. Yeah, because guess where they're doing this, kids? Guess where they're making the sacrifice? In like the super secret school library. Library. (laughs) Which, if Giles still had his job, who's librarian at this school? I guess they work nine to five. Yeah, no, they, they don't, don't hang get... out after school. No, they clock the fuck out at exactly four o'clock when it's time to go. Like they're done, <laughs> donezo. The library those... haven't even left. Right, exactly. The um the current school librarian for the Sunnydale library is already like two drinks in at happy hour somewhere. But like Buffy's in a cloak with the rest of them. She's been there this entire time. Right. How'd they not notice that a tiny girl, tiny woman? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Was in their cloak. Well, maybe that's not that's saying a lot about the little guy that she I'm assuming is the one that she pulled into her office. <laughs> they that, are about the same. <laughs> so he hasn't fully hit puberty just yet. So, you know, he's a little smaller stature still. And, and Buffy kicks Peter. And for the first time in the history of this show, we get what it looks like to be kicked by Buffy. Yeah. Because he is in some pain on the ground. He's just yeah. like, oh, oh, oh. Because Riley could take Buffy's kicks. Mm. Spike can take Buffy's kicks. We've never actually seen a human get kicked by Buffy. Not really, no. And, and it hurt. And he calls her a stupid bitch. And it really bugs me the amount of times that Buffy has been called a stupid bitch on the show. Mm-hmm. Or any like that. Just like the the frequency in which the term bitch is just like thrown around. Yeah. On here. And I'm also bugged with the fact that why did he bring a meat cleaver to this thing? Like what was that necessary? Right. Were, were you chopping the whole head off or was this just to slit her throat? Because it seems a little overkill for me, friend. It seems it may be the only thing he could get from home. <laughs> it's just to show that nobody would miss. This is just yeah, I guess this is just to illustrate the incompetence <laughs> that is happening. The knife here. nobody uses at home. Right. This is just but, to, uh, to point out that he had it. no business doing this. Yes. Skip. Skip, yes. For all of you that have watched Angel, Skip's buddy Merv shows up. <laughs> and wasn't there another dude, another demon that shows up in like other past episodes of Buffy that looks like this? It's like distant cousins. <laughs> the one that gave Spike his soul. Right. So it's like, y'all just, I mean, the first of all, either so there's supposed to be some sort of shared lineage here between these demons or we just got real lazy and or we just got you know, real lazy with our suit or like the budget was just like getting chopped down a little bit and we we couldn't we just have to modify our demon suits a little bit right? slightly we, just, we but can't. we got one we got one suit to work with one right. rubber suit and that latex <laughs> costs a lot <laughs> i like how peter was peter of the bro culture group here the rest when shit gets real they run and hide Right. But Peter, <laughs> he's determined. He is deter. He is willing to cut her fucking head off with that meat cleaver, <laughs> while Buffy's handling Merv. <laughs> and Spike shows up to help with a torch. With a torch that I 
guess was maybe already there. Who was on torch building duty in I the broke know. culture? Like <laughs> it's a perfectly wrapped torch, and I know he's got a lot of time in the basement, but it's not to build torches, right? And plus, why would you really need it, right? Can you could just find a flashlight spike, right? If it gets uh, dark in the basement, in the basement, or maybe flick a basement. switch because I'm sure there's plenty. There's lighting. There's electricity. <sighs> So, so Spike some fighty is, fighty happens. Spike is beating up on Peter and getting he's like beating up on Peter and, he, and getting the the blowback of, of ah, the chip. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this guy. And Peter's like, "Who are you?" And he's like, "I'm a bad man." Mm. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> but Merv has like a built-in cheat code in his chest where it's like insert here right here is how you kill me just stick <laughs> something in my clearly poorly designed belly yeah it's like there's no covering there whatsoever there's no there's nothing there i don't know why so buffy takes said well built torch and shoves it in his belly and he burns up and we think he's dead but he's not not fully not just yet not fully so like saves cassie he unties her I love this part. <laughs> I know. I love it so much because it's not just thrown out there. Right. It's something that we are going to wonder about all season long. Right. She like looks and, at him and softly says, she'll, she'll tell you. And he's like, huh? huh? And she's like, someday she'll tell you. Hmm. And we're like, she who? Tell him what? Tell, tell him, him when? What? She what? What are you talking about? <laughs> And then Peter's so upset that his demon is dead. He like crawls, say, "No, God, no, my demon, my demon. What am I gonna do?" And it bites him. He's so angry. What about and my it, infinite riches? And then it blows up. Which, all right, <laughs> okay. So we think say. Buffy has saved Cassie from certain death. We think it's good. They walk out into the hall. A fucking crossbow right. almost takes Cassie out, but Buffy catches it. I was like, oh, whew, that was close. Oh, and then, oh. oh, my God. You know what? It would have been really bad if that dad did what? And then Cassie collapses. <laughs> like, she, drops, she, she literally just drops fucking dead. Yeah. Not because of some horrific, rapey culture group. Not because of a crossbow, but because of nature. Yeah. She had a congestive heart problem no one knew about. Poor, including her. She including her like her mom knew that there was something in the family history but she never told cassie and uh yeah you know buffy when buffy snatched the arrow she like gets all indignant or self-righteous it's like see you can make a difference <laughs> i'm like oh buffy you're oh, about to get really dis- disappointed uh so this is a very unpopular and probably a am- immoral thing for me to say and <laughs> but I can't wait. <laughs> if she was going to die anyway, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why not get your infinite riches, motherfucker? <laughs> what about my infinite riches? <laughs> you couldn't bleed just a little bit for me. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even have to hurt you. I just had to wait like right. five minutes. <laughs> exactly. Like, seriously, I had. <laughs> What do you guys think? Should she have bled for, for some infinite riches? If it had been anybody but a Trumpy bro culture group. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah. This is a complete 100% filler episode with one line that pays off mm-hmm. at the end of the season. Right. There is no thread to this episode. There is no, it doesn't advance the plot. It doesn't advance the arc. No. There's no character growth. Spike no. is still crazy. Right. I think the most would, and even like, do they ever speak of her again? Like Dawn's all broken up at the end of this episode and like bawling her eyeballs out. But do we ever you mention know, Cassie again? <laughs> I don't think so. And it's the second time that she has made friends that she doesn't keep. Right. Like. What happened to the two people she met in the first episode? Right. I would imagine you guys would have been bonded a little bit after all of that crazy that happened. But and- no. But that's help. And help was not great. <laughs> <laughs> not great. Do you like this episode? 
It's all right. I never, I, but like usually it's one of those, like if I'm doing just a regular old rewatch, just I will either skip it or be doing something else while it plays. One of those yeah. that I, I wouldn't care if I fell asleep during it. Kind of or cleaning. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I need to vacuum. It's right. the perfect time. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh. I would. I wouldn't pause it when I left the room. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. We do still have some bodies dropped. There was an unidentified old lady vampire in the beginning, Avilius, the demon. No, oh, but we like name. to call him Merv. Merv. His name's Merv. <laughs> was burned by Buffy with a torch, and poor Cassie Newton died of a congestive heart defect. Is that only two natural causes of death on Buffy ever? Yeah. Yep. Cassie Newton, she's with her and uh, Joyce. Tara doesn't count because, I mean, even though it was a natural, like, human death, it was, you know, it wasn't natural causes. Right, exactly. You know, a right. bullet tearing through your fucking chest isn't natural. No. But her and Joyce, oof. This does pass oof. the Bechdel test because it's centered around Cassie Newton, a character we never met before and we never talk about again. Uh, <laughs> Via con Dios, Cassie. <laughs> there's no moral here because there's no story here. Like, there's nothing to be done with this. No. Some, I guess the moral is sometimes you just have to accept life for what it is. Yeah, I guess so. Sometimes nothing can be done. Now, I see, I, I noticed that you have a, a note that um, Glenn Morshower. Mr. Newton and D.B. Woodson uh, were later a, a star in 24 together. Yep. Because like I said, he is the military dude on every damn show. Right. I almost so. feel like he was a military dude like on this show. Like it's like he was used before where, <gasps> oh my God. where Riley was Do we need to concerned. go back to season four and see, was he the man that said burn it down and salt That's the what earth? I think so. <laughs> That's exactly the one I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was just a different old white dude. <laughs> same white, same same white dude, different character, different actor. Yeah, okay. Well, I might check it out again. Although, just risk discuss. Head cannon. If it is the same character, I get why he drinks all day. That was the <laughs> shit that went down. <laughs> I mean, all right. We never actually got his name, so it could be the same guy. It, it could, could be the same, be the same guy. <laughs> So you tell us what you think of help and um, you can record an MP3 file less than two minutes and email it to revisiting Sunnydale at gmail.com. We may play it on the air or you could just uh, talk to us on the social media platforms. Next episode is selfless. Lots of Anya love. Oh, yeah. And more fraternity brothers. Great. More, more, more bro, bro culture. Fuck. Is this just be like, I wonder if there's some deep seated thing. Like I doubt Joss was ever in a fraternity was ever allowed in it and I just feel like this is just his way of getting back at them Revisiting Sunnydale is produced by Rugged Angel Productions and hosted by Camila and Marcella please follow the podcast on Twitter Instagram and Facebook please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and if you are in the giving mood please consider being a patron by going to patreon.com slash revisiting Sunnydale 